As Hamilcar conquered the tribes of the Iberian Peninsula, they attempted to send word to Rome, who asked Hamilcar what he was doing. He responded that he was simply conquering them in order to pay Rome. During the conquests, Hamilcar died in a battle with one of the native tribes, but the territorial gains he made would provide the foothold for future expansions into the peninsula. Hannibal continued to make progress in Iberia where his father had left off, and he defeated several tribes until the only major force standing against him was the city of Saguntum. The city called out to Rome for assistance, and although Rome had agreed not to engage in matters to the south of the Ebro River, Rome agreed nonetheless. However, Rome never came to the aid of the city, and Hannibal eventually conquered the city. Roman envoys were sent to Carthage to demand them forfeit Hannibal or face war. The Carthaginian Senate was outraged. Rome had just broken the agreement in Saguntum. The envoys told the Senate that it was their decision, peace or war. The Senate responded that it was the envoys who should decide. The envoys decided for war. Hannibal began his operation, dispatching envoys to the Gallic tribes in the north to plan his assault on Italy. It was there that Carthage came to know of Rome's recent conquests of the northern land in Italy surrounding the Po River. He discovered that these recently conquered tribes hated Rome and were ready to assault the Republic with him. As Hannibal crossed the Ebro, he defeated several native tribes and pushed on through the Pyrenees Mountains. Rome decided to respond by splitting up their forces, sending some to stop Hannibal and some to invade Africa, while the rest were sent to the north to deal with the Gallic revolts on the Po. Hannibal continued to defeat native tribes and eventually entered the Alps, barely evading the Roman army sent to stop him. The trek through the Alps proved to be the most difficult and impressive feats in history. Along the way, the army faced several native tribes who would assault the army in every way imaginable, lying to Hannibal and letting him pass, only to wrap behind him while the army passed through a narrow corridor, all the while hurling boulders from atop the men. After drudging through the harsh conditions, the tired army finally crossed the Alps. Hannibal found that many of the tribes of the Po had forgone allegiance to him, but after crushing the Roman army sent to confront him, all of the Gallic tribes of Italy pledged to Hannibal. Hannibal continued to defeat the shocked Romans and advanced through southern Italy. Hannibal was genius as a general and continued to defeat the Roman army sent to stop him, crushing the Romans like had never been seen before. Rome panicked and elected Quintus Fabius Maximus as Roman dictator to respond to the terrifying threat of Hannibal. Hannibal continued to wreak havoc on the countryside as his men pillaged the cities that did not ally to Hannibal. Hannibal planned to follow through the same strategy that Pyrrhus once had, that was to convince the Italian cities to abandon Rome in favor of him. But none of the Italian cities turned traitor, and the situation in Iberia was proving positive for Rome. Hannibal seized the city of Cannae, and Rome amassed a large army of 86,000 men to confront Hannibal at the city. The battle resulted in the worst defeat that Rome had ever faced. Hannibal encircled the Roman army and slaughtered the Romans in yet another genius strategy. Hannibal was now the main power in Italy, controlling the coast, and with no Roman army to contest him, Italian cities began to fall to his side. But Rome refused to give in. They would not accept negotiations. But Hannibal never received aid from Iberia or Carthage. However, new allegiances in Syracuse and Macedon began to strengthen his position further. Rome would train new legions, and they would not fall for Hannibal's tricks any longer. A war of attrition began for the control of Italy. Hannibal attempted to gather a support base of Italian cities, but could never find his footing, and as his terror began to die down, Rome was winning in Iberia and securing the holdings in Sicily and Sardinia. Rome moved on to Macedon to defeat the Macedonian king Philip V and prevented him from invading Italy and supporting Hannibal. When Rome attempted to siege Syracuse for betraying their alliance, the famous inventor Archimedes' insane inventions caused the Romans to simply wait out the city to starve. Rome would eventually take the city and firmly control all of Sicily against Carthage. However, in Iberia, the famous Scipio Africanus decided to move on Africa against Carthage, as Hannibal had done in Italy. After strengthening his army in Sicily, Scipio moved on to Africa and crushed several armies after landing. Carthage itself was in danger, and it called out to Hannibal to return to Carthage to defend the city. The frustrated genius left Italy and met Scipio in person before the decisive Battle of Zama. Scipio and his ally Massinissa, king of Numidia, who had changed sides to fight with the Romans, faced Hannibal's larger force. Scipio Africanus defeated Hannibal and Carthage sued for peace. 
Carthage was forced to forfeit all of the elephants, ships, and Roman prisoners, as well as recognize the new territories of Numidia under King Masinissa. Along with the war reparations, Rome also took southern Spain. Rome was now the master of the Mediterranean. After securing their territory in Iberia and northern Italy, Rome moved on to conquer the land in Macedon and Illyria, as well as fighting with the Greeks against the Seleucid Empire. Rome decided to conquer Carthage for good, and after the last of the war reparations had been paid, war moved back to Carthage. Carthage was put to siege, and Rome eventually assaulted the city. Most of the population had starved to death, but the surviving population was sold into slavery. Carthage had become a Roman territory in northern Africa. Thus, the Great Punic Wars had come to an end. Stay tuned next week for the final years of the Republic.